I'll take your first point first and your second point second. Concerning Mr. Trump, I said multiple times, it's very important that we pray for him and Mr. Pence. Uh, I had to be honest, I never trusted Mr. Trump. I wanted Mr. Trump to win the election simply because I wanted Hillary Clinton to lose it. That's all. Uh, I was not so much pro-Trump, I was anti-Clinton. Uh, I didn't have a lot of trust or faith in Mr. Trump. I personally would have preferred, at one point at least, Senator Cruz or, or, or Governor Huckabee. But I'll take Mr. Trump over Hillary Clinton. Then again, I would have taken Jack the Ripper over Hillary Clinton. That is my personal view. You are free to differ. No matter who got elected, even if Hillary Clinton won, it would have been important for us as Christians to pray for the person who occupies the Oval Office. Right now, Mr. Trump is already seemingly beginning to drag his heels on a number of things. Not just the criminal prosecution of Hillary Clinton, I hope that happens, but relocation of the embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, he should move ahead with this and keep this promise rapidly and get it over with. Uh, that's my view. Please pray for him that he does not turn out to be just another politician, because he was not a politician. Please pray he doesn't become one who just lies to conservatives, lies to evangelicals just to get elected and then sings a different tune once he gets the power and then he begins lying again the next election. That's what the Republican Party has always been and done. That's what the Republican Party is. Uh, please pray that he does not become like his predecessors, the Bushes and so forth. Now, as far as this interfaith prayer service and meeting with Muslims, reading from the Koran and chanting to the Allah and things like this, we should never engage in such wickedness. There's a movement called Chrislam that is trying to merge or make compatible belief in the teachings of the Koran with the teachings of the Word of God. The Koran is a pseudo-logon. It is not the Word of God. It is demonically inspired. It is completely, completely twisted book, devoid of factual and historical merit. The Jesus of Islam, Isa, is not the Jesus of the scriptures. May we never forget that one day all nations and all people will stand accountable before you. I humbly ask this in the name of the one who changed my life. And since there was so much flack, I decided, well, I'll say it four times. <laughs> Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Jesus. Yeshua is, is Hebrew for Jesus. Isa is Arabic for Jesus. Jesus is Spanish for Jesus. And Jesus is English for Jesus. If I had known in Chinese, I would have said that too. Just give a whole list of all the names that Jesus is called in every language. And then we prayed the Lord's Prayer. Now you know, if you were reading the papers last month, that there was great pressure on me to not say the word Jesus in the prayer. You need to be inclusive. Now there was no way I was going to wimp out and say, may the force be with you. Okay, it just wasn't going to happen. All right. There was never any doubt or any question in my mind how I was going to pray. In the first place, I wasn't praying to people. I was talking to my best friend. I humbly ask this in the name of the one who changed my life, Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Jesus, who taught us to pray. How do you view God in a desert? There's two types of birds. There's vultures and there's hummingbirds. One lives off dead carcasses, rotting meat. The other lives off the beautiful sweet nectar in a particular flower on a particular desert plant. In the same desert, they both find what they're looking for. Do you know, take it all the way back into the Old Testament and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah, to a Muslim. To us, Abba Father, God. Denies his deity and thinks Muhammad was a prophet superior to Jesus. There's no compatibility. Allah was the Nabataean moon god. Although a generic term for God, it is not Yahweh. It is not Hashem. 
is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as is surreptitiously claimed. We should not be involved in these things. Now, I do not know what these figures like David Jeremiah may have done. I do not know. Concerning the Bush family, I have never had anything but a loathing for those people. I believe the Saudi Arabians carried them in their back pocket. Old man Bush said the Saudis are our friends, a regime that persecutes Christians, that flogs Christians, that hangs Christians. Maybe a friend of Bush, but then no friend of mine and they're no friend of America. I consider the Bush family to be wicked, wicked people. They are wicked, evil people. I believe they betrayed this country to the Saudi Arabians. I consider young Bush to be a colossal hypocrite. When asked about homosexuality, he said, take the log out of your own eye. That verse, taking the log out of your own eye, has nothing whatsoever to do with not calling sin, sin. If the word of God says something is wrong, that's not us, that's God. When the church was being persecuted in Saudi Arabia, when Saudi Arabia was funding Jew hatred, funding Islamic extremism, resulting in the death of Christians and anti-Semitism and even terror against America, the Bush family were in the back pockets of the Saudis. The Salafis, the Wahhab, the House of Saud, that is the Bush family. For evangelicals to have participated in anything with the Bush family, let's understand something. It was Bush, Bush, who began celebrating Ramadan in the White House. Why won't they celebrate the resurrection of Jesus in the royal palace in Saudi Arabia? It was Bush who put the Koran in the White House library after September 11th to honor Islam, the ones who did it to America. Try putting a New Testament in the library of the royal palace in the Ad Saudi Arabia. And I think those evangelicals who accommodated them were not just misguided. But if they joined in interfaith worship, if they did do that, and I have not seen it, but if they did join interfaith worship where people were praying to Allah,
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير. O oh, humankind, who have created you from a single male and female, Adam and Eve, and made you into nations and tribes and communities that you may know each other. Really, the most honored of you in the sight of God is the one is the most righteous of you, and God has full knowledge and is well acquainted with all things. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْعَالِمِينَ And among the signs of God is the creation of heaven and earth and the variation in your languages and your colors. Verily, in that are signs for those who know. Reading from the from the Quran's first surah, Surah Fatiha. Auzu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil alamin r-Rahman r-Rahim. Maliki yom idin ayya kana abdu ayya kana stain. Idna sirat al-mustaqim sirat al-lazim. An amta alehim. 
غیر المغدوب علیہم ولدوالین آمین Of course, Roger Moore stands out front of the Trump Tower saying, we are all Muslim. Madeleine Albright says, I was raised Catholic, became Episcopalian, and found out later my family was Jewish. I stand ready to register as Muslim in solidarity. She was Secretary of State for all eight years of the Clinton, wasn't she? That was a train wreck, wasn't it? Uh, in England, and this is common, becoming common, there were two terror-related imams that gave a prayer at the inauguration, a uh, post- prayer meeting the next morning at the National Cathedral. In England, they're doing these interfaith prayer services. I don't have time to go into them. There was a man who is one of the Queen's chaplains. He has spoken out against this. He's Anglican. And he has resigned and continues to speak out that, listen, this is just nonsense. We cannot do this. But in this case, this, the clergyman in the Scottish cathedral, the one that led to the Queen's chaplain resigning, he said he defended it. And he was criticized. And some people wonder why he was criticized. But then here's a picture from just uh, yesterday or to, uh, two days ago about interfaith prayer services with Muslims that are taking place among people who claim to be Christian and evangelical all over the country. Uh, here's a, a tweet that somebody put out from the Oregon-Idaho Methodist Conference. Love your neighbor as yourself. Pray to support Muslims. Uh, American Thinker has a good article on this. A deep hatred and rejection of Judaism and Christianity are hardwired into Islamic doctrine including the Quran. Many of its chapters are incorporated into mandatory daily Islamic prayer. The very first Quranic chapter, considered the most exalted of all chapters, is a prayer directed to Allah asking him to keep Muslims away from the misguided paths of the Jews and Christians. This chapter is a necessary part of the five mandatory daily prayers and is recited not once but anywhere from 17 to 100 times a day by devout Muslims or 6,200 to 36,500 times per year. It is that verse at the National Cathedral, right after a lady sung, How Great Thou Art, and a mom who was the former head of the Islamic Society of North America from Indianapolis, a non-indicted co-conspirator in the Holy Land Foundation uh, terror funding trial, the largest terror funding trial in the hi- American history, got up and read that verse in the National Cathedral. Now, I've heard that the president is upset, but I, what distresses me greatly is that there are a number of people there, and nobody said, I don't want anything to do with that false nonsense. Evangelicals. I mean, look, it would be the last time you're invited, okay? But, you know, is, is uh, go out swinging, I guess is the way that, uh, to look at it made themselves accessory to idolatry. Now let's understand this. The Republican Party has been great at this. It always has been. They don't care. Remember, the only difference between a Democrat and a Republican is that a Republican is everything a Democrat is, plus a liar on top of it, who pretends to be a conservative. That's all. It was, again, as I've said many times, the um, Republican Supreme Court during the administration of Dwight Eisenhower and then JFK, who ordered prayer out of the school, the Earl Warren Supreme Court. It was the Warren Burger Supreme Court of Nixon that ordered gone out of the maternity ward with Roe v. Wade, and it was Ronald Reagan's appointee, Sandra Day O'Connor, who ordered God, the Ten Commandments, out of the Judicial Building in Alabama. This is the Republican Party. This is Ronald Reagan. This is Bush. This is Nixon. This is Eisenhower. Unfit to be leaders of anything. Yet, so many Christians are under the delusion that these people are somehow Christian. Like when Sandra Day O'Connor, appointed by Reagan, wrote the decision 
outlawing the Texas anti-sodomy laws that opened the door for the national avalanche of same-sex marriages. Thank you, Ronald Reagan, who nominated that judge in California, appointed by Bush, who outlawed Proposition 8 with the stroke of a pen. That's the Republicans. That's Reagan, who came to power with the blessings of so many naive, undiscerning, and gullible evangelicals. Well, let's understand this. Jerry Falwell was the arch evangelical supporting the Republican Party during the time of Reagan. Jesus warned in the last days about antichrists. If there was ever an antichrist, it was Sun Young Moon. If there was ever an antichrist, it was Sun Young Moon. He said he was the return of Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Second Advent, and his book, The Divine Principle. His cult owns the Washington Times, the Republican newspaper of Washington, D.C., the alternative to the Washington Compost. This gentleman is Mr. Sun Myung Moon, who is traveling around the world calling for the establishment of one world religion and one church. Seated next to him is his interpreter, David Kim. Mr. Moon speaks only Korean. Now, Mr. Kim, will you explain to Mr. Moon that if I take a merry, lighthearted approach to him, it's not on disrespect, it's because uh, in civilian life I'm a part-time humorist. Go, all right. Now, Mr. Mr. Moon, according to your remarkable biography, uh, at the age of 16, on Easter Sunday, you had a conversation with Jesus. I am to kiss the uh, Yes, he did through the revelation uh, in vision. Well, now, uh, you weren't with him, Mr. Kim, at the time. Uh, no, I, I was not there. Well, then did, did Jesus him. speak a good Korean? Uh, and did it have a Hebrew accent? Korean, yes, Hebrew accent. In Korean, they conversed each other. Uh, that means uh, spirit world, uh, when you spiritually contact or in spirit world, we converse, we carry the conversation with mind to mind, heart to heart. Yes. All right, now, at, at present, Mr. Moon is regarded as a messiah by many devout and, and very attractive followers. There are some in the audience tonight. Uh -huh. And, and he, he's regarded as a messiah. Now, there are, by my researches, 27 working messiahs roaming the world right now. Moon claimed to be the return of Christ and said his wife was the Holy Spirit. He ran a cult. Jerry Falwell took $2.3 million from him at Liberty University, embraced him, and celebrated him as an unsung hero. That was Jerry Falwell, kneeling down in public and kissing the feet of an antichrist at Liberty University. And Ed Hinson went along with it, didn't say a word. Tim LaHaye tried to organize 300 major evangelical leaders to volunteer for federal prison in solidarity with Moon. Born-again Christian leaders should volunteer to go to federal prison in support of an antichrist? According to Tim LaHaye, yes. Thomas Ice said nothing. They just went along with it. Oh, these people make me sick. And they make God sick. Please tell them I said so. An antichrist is an antichrist. And if there ever was an antichrist, it was Sun Young Moon. And if there was ever an Antichrist book, it is the Koran. If there was ever a false prophet, it is Mohammed. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale 
that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, and the final and latest one, Parpezzo, Parpezzo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.